I'm Indy Nidell, and this is another exciting episode of The Great War on the Road. Now today we're going to be shooting at several locations from the Battle of Verdun, which at 299 days was the longest battle of the First World War. And in case you're wondering who these three fine, upstanding young gentlemen with me today are, these are some of the creators of the game Verdun. Now, can you uh, say who you are and say a couple of words for, for all those people at home? Yeah, so uh, I'm uh, Jos Huber. I'm a co-founder of the Verdun Project. Okay. And I'm from uh, the city of Alkmaar in the Netherlands. The Netherlands? Yes. Cool. And My name is uh, Sjors Jansen. I'm the level designer for the project. Uh -huh. That basically means that I uh, make sure the levels are fun to play and they also uh, look good. It's also part of my, uh, my job. So I'm an uh, artist and designer. And you're also from the Netherlands? Yeah, right? I'm from the same area as Josis. Okay. Did you guys know each other before Verdun? No. no. All right, cool. And you? Uh, I'm James Chilton. I'm the lead artist for Verdun, and I'm not from the Netherlands. Okay. <laughs> I'm from England. Um, and I work uh, freelance with the project on everything from weapon artwork to character artwork. Um, How did you end up? Uh, I. I sort of contacted Jos before um, finishing university, saying I had a big interest in World War One, and um, yeah, it's, we've kind of been working together since. Now we, I don't know if you guys know or not, but we did a, a live stream several months ago where we played Verdun with some of the fans and it was a lot of fun, but it leads me to the question of all the battles in all the wars in the world, why, why Verdun? Why choose Verdun? I think because Verdun is like uh, one of the most iconic battles, it's sort of uh, the World War One, or at least the Western Front in a, uh, in a microcosm or it symbolizes the fighting on the Western Front more than, I guess, any other battle uh, does. No, I agree, I agree. I, and funny that you used the microcosm, because that's what, you know, we've talked a lot about Alistair Horne's book. Uh, and he, he calls it a, a, a microcosm of the Western Front, of all its horrors and all of its glories in microcosm. And it was, it was the longest battle. And while it didn't have the highest casualties, it had the highest casualties for, for the size of the battle. I mean, it's an area about the size of the London parks. Right, put together. Yeah. Did you consider any other things, or was it clear from the beginning you were going to do World War One and going to do Verdun? Well, I, actually, I, uh, I I visited this area as a uh, when I was ten years old, yeah. and uh, um, I was well. When you look around here, I was I was immediately uh, inspired by the, the the battles and the the landscape, and it sort of uh, gripped me, and it became uh, a fascination from from there on, and from that on. Uh, uh, yeah, I had to make a video game about it. When I became more technical skilled, I could pick that up. And, uh, well, you're and Verdun, your game Verdun is is known for being particularly realistic to the actual band, the actual play, which is great. But um, like, what do you guys think about how it is uh, like a, a computer game, a video game, to commemorate a battle or as historical education? I mean, how? How do you feel that that really works in the modern day? Do you think it is a valid way to educate people according to history? Or do you think it'll mislead people because something won't be accurate or somebody will argue and say, you know, I mean, what do you think? I've always had a keen interest in history, but a lot of the history taught in schools has been a little bit boring for me. You know, old VHS tapes, old um, photocopies from books. For me, the video games just brought it to life. Yeah. and an incredibly useful learning tool. Um, I've learned a hell of a lot through. How long did it take to actually put the game together from the first idea? I mean, how many months, weeks, years, decades? Centuries? <laughs> <laughs> it was actually a, a, a quite a long process. We yeah. started the first concept in 2006. Wow. So like almost 11 years that's ago. That's a long time. That's, yeah. uh, that's quite a long time ago. And first sort of as a hobby project. Yeah. Because, uh, I started with the two brothers from M2H. Okay. Which uh, have a lot of experience with multiplayer games. Yeah. And we sort of started as a hobby project. We were both in college. Uh, uh, and from there on... Kids. Yeah, kids, yeah, folly. And from I'm there old. on, we, we, we built a great uh, base version. And in yeah. 2013, from there on, we picked it up. We professionalized. We got the guys on board. Uh, How big is the crew? How many are you? Uh, about 10 people. 10 people. That's pretty impressive. Because yeah. when you think of like Battlefield, there's tens of thousands of people. <laughs> yeah, I've seen, I've seen the credit list. Yeah. Yeah, you're in it. <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> 
Um, okay, well, that's all I got for right here. Now we're at Fort Du Almon, which was one of the centerpieces of the French defenses of Verdun. Now, the fort itself was not finished until 1913, and many people considered it the strongest and most easily defensible fort in all of Europe. However, when Verdun began, uh, Duomon fell to the Germans without a shot fired since the garrison had been removed and it was a big mess and you know the whole beginning of Verdun was a mess. Now it remained in German hands throughout 1916. They did try one bloody very bloody attempt to retake it in May, which was a bit of a disaster. But the French had their big counterstroke in October and took it back. Thing is, in order to prepare for that, they were really meticulous. Now, they didn't want to have any problems with water supplies, which they had had uh, during the defense of Fort Vaux, so they brought in the engineer who designed a lot of the Panama Canal, and he made them canvas portable water, you know, uh, water supply system, so they would have no water problems. They also, at Steinville, um, they built a replica uh, of the entire battlefield, including a, a full-size Fort du Almont, and practiced on that so that the troops would be able to take it to attack even in fog or mist. They could do it blindfolded. And it was in weather similar to this when the Germans thought, no, the French are not going to attack today, that the French did attack today and did manage to take back Fort du Almont. Now, they were not the only ones who built a replica of Fort du Almont. These gentlemen made a replica of Fort du Almont, a digital replica, but a replica nevertheless, right? Yeah, yeah. so yeah, we try to make the fort a one on one actually. We use geodata and uh, it's actually really interesting to actually standing here right now because we've seen all the, the, the photos, all the aerial photo, photography, the historical photos and the in-game scenario. And he looks at the entrance and it's like really interesting uh, <laughs> to, to see the shape in its present uh, day form. Well, the entrance is a bit, you know, yeah. of a wreck right now, but yours is a bit less of a wreck. Still a wreck, but Still a bit less of a wreck. Less of yeah. a wreck. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we tried to cre recreate, you mentioned earlier the, the, the 22 of May offensive. Yeah. So we tried to uh, recreate the fort in that state. Uh -huh, exactly. Okay, wow. So that proved to be a real challenge because uh, there's not a lot of pictures during the battle. And the French made a lot of uh, modifications uh, at the fort after the battle. Yeah. Uh, the fort was in a completely different state before the battle. Yeah. So uh, we, tr we, we, we tried to uh, create as much yeah. of an accurate picture uh, as possible. Um, yeah, so for instance, the, int the entrance is completely, uh, uh, completely different. Uh, it's gone. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's gone it's now. Gone. That's, that's yeah. a good word to use. It's yeah. gone. Yeah. So what we actually have in the level, uh, what you can see here is different, is um, we have actually the walls were still intact here. Okay. Um, around the gate here, the main gate, there were, there's, was like a really high uh, wall, about, a, I think it was exactly the height of uh, what it is still at the moment. Yeah. And to the side there was a machine gun nest, um, which we don't, which is not a working machine gun nest in the game, but nevertheless we have the, the gun ports in, the, in our model. What's, uh, what's this stuff? Uh, that stuff is probably removed railing um, from the inside of the fort. Once you came through the tunnel of the uh, fort entrance, you were met then with another tier of the fort. There were multiple tiers. Um, this sort of, I mean, this could this could very well be the bridge that was above the um, okay. exit of the entrance. That's the railing that was all around the inside. There were very tall iron fences around sort of like the external part of the fort, along the walls as well. Um, it was very, very difficult to attack it in its, yeah. you know, original state, but, you know, it's hundreds of thousands of shells later, it's yeah, a I lot easier that, to attack it. Well, the earthworks above were, in some places, eight meters thick at yeah. the beginning, and by the time, and what the Germans didn't realize, that by late October, in some places, they were only one yeah. or and two. Yeah, and with the walls as well, I mean, you, once you got to the top of the wall, yeah. each corner of the fort or each, uh, there are five sort of counterscarp galleries okay. where they could fire along the inside of the walls of the fort. And of course, there's a huge drop on the other side or should be a huge drop on the other side where, you know, it's kind of, that's where people would be trapped. Just a killing zone. Yeah, it's just, it's just a complete killing field, but obviously, the fort wasn't manned correctly. No. So when the Germans did, you know, kind of start pushing forward and trying to sneak in and attack, yeah. it wasn't noticed. Yeah. yeah. During actually during the twenty second of May attack, yeah. like the you know, the deep uh motor around the fort actually was no longer an obstacle because it was so 
so many sh oh, right, shells. Sure. Like it's yeah. kind of like it's it's today. It's yeah. flattened out, you know. Yeah. It's, over time, you can uh, navigate yeah. across this ground yeah, fairly so, easily. Yeah. But in its original state, you had walls that were you know 20, 30 feet high. Yeah. Well, shall we look at a little bit more of it? Yeah. Yeah. Let's absolutely. do it. Okay. Cool. Continuing on from the great gatehouse, you would then enter the interior of the fort. Uh -huh. um, the first thing you would meet is the bridge over the top of the gatehouse, which would lead to um, fortifications on top of the gatehouse itself and a plateau in front of the barrack area. Okay, so that's the barracks there. Yeah. You'd have a ring road, sort of like going round the, uh, the fort itself with one going off in that direction, one going off in that direction meeting on the other side of the fort yeah. and this was great for supplies, um, ammunition, uh, water, food, items that you would need for a you know, really solid sustained defence. Yeah. Um, the, the entrances you can see at the minute or maybe can't see due to the weather, these have changed a lot since uh, 1916, uh, 1917. Um, a lot of these will have been converted you know, during the Second World War or, or earlier. Uh, these saw not very much fighting, right. but a hell of a lot of damage. There were hundreds of thousands of shells dropped yeah. on the fort and all sorts of things, you know, were collapsing and filling up all over the place. It was it, the, the the difference between the start of the battle and the end of the battle is as vast as the difference today. All right, thanks. So yeah, behind me uh, is actually the barracks of the fort. Uh, this was not really a fighting position, but it was turned into a fighting position as you know the the, the front of the fort sort of eroded because of the artillery fire. You can still see part of the original architecture of the fort so you see the archways uh, which extrude inwards um, into the like the barrack rooms behind it would be uh, bunk beds uh, for the soldiers to sleep in here actually I think this was a shell of a uh, big bird at 420 millimeter or uh, one of the French railway cannons which uh, caused this impact and uh, the barracks to collapse so what are we looking at here so this is the uh, 155 millimeter cannon yeah. of the fort. It could uh, retract. It's uh, uh, back in its dome and fire uh, two times per minute. Which we learned from somebody's comment from yeah. out of the ether. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for that. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, fans. Yeah. There, there are many turrets uh, on the fort. Um, as you can see uh, behind us, the uh, there's a, a machine gun turret and an observation turret. And there's many more uh, in all directions of the fort. And actually, um, this, the fort is here for a reason. This is really a, uh, one of the highest points uh, on the, on the um, Verdun Ridge, um, on the Meuse Heights. Yeah. And you could see uh, in the other valley behind it, so on this side you have the Meuse Valley. On the other side you would have uh, the, I think it's the Wave River Valley. Oh yeah, sure. And you could see um, all the way to the frontier. With Germany, which is okay. if you take a bus from Metz, you can you drive across the, the former frontier. You drive towards this. Uh, that's pretty flat. And so there's it, nothing stopping the wind up here. I'll tell you yeah. that. <laughs> if 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 you could see right now, you could see Germany. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If the uh, if the wind and the mist wasn't a deterrent, then the 155 millimeter might well have been. Okay. And for that 155 millimeter, we've got a an observation turret as well. Let's go check it out. We have included a lot of these in the game. Yeah. Um, a great deal of the fort has been modelled, unfortunately. Um, due to the sheer scale of the fort, we just had to tone it down a little bit. But you can see the intensity of some of the fighting oh, something, here. Something, look at this. Something, get this. Something yeah. nearly got through right here. So this would be manned and there'd be somebody with binoculars or some optic device saying, Oh, there's Germans over there. Right, get the 155 millimeter on them. I imagine this will have been occupied by the Germans because you see some of the uh, wounding, which is basically the sort of scars of war coming in from that direction. So the French would have been a little bit miffed with this thing being here and used yeah. against them. What's yeah, really interesting to note, perhaps also, is that these turrets uh, they're placed in 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 in, in position where. Uh, throughout the the level in the game, you can always see the turrets. So wherever you you are, you always see like two or three yeah. of these. Okay. This one overlooks the entire uh, barracks area yeah, and the road sure. coming up, and it over overlooks all the the high spots as well where uh, people would be coming over if they would be coming from the uh, entrance side. 
And, and it's worth noting as well that all these machine gun turrets, observation turrets, are all accessible from the fort. So you don't have to go over up and land. To right, I mean, you just come. Where can you access, you know, from outside here? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, everything is designed, you know, for, for a siege. Um, and, you know, if you get surrounded, you can access various parts of the fort, including the external walls, through tunnels and little galleyways and things like that. Oh, yeah, well, uh, you can knock this up, but you can't yeah. take it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, one, of, one of the machine gun turrets, actually when the French were during their attack on the fort, uh, their failed attempt to take it, they uh, captured part of the, the top of the fort, but the Germans used uh, the machine gun turret to signal back to their own lines, the French are here, and they, they could, could do that because the French didn't stop them, they didn't know that it was used as a uh, signaling station. Okay. Okay, so we're looking now at something that's not actually here anymore. Yeah, it's, right. it's actually completely gone. So. Remember the roads? They entered on both sides of the fort. Yeah. They came out on the other side. There actually used to be a row of artillery bunkers here where they stored the ammunition uh, on this road, which would be okay. going down here. But you know, the artillery uh, did the work. I think about 120,000 shells fired by the French alone on this on the fort itself. So uh, it was completely mulled over. Uh, and in the game, you uh, you actually still have those. Um, uh, bunkers right here. Now, how did did you did you build them from photos or how did you yeah. figure it out? Well, actually, there's not a lot of photos, but there's very few like uh, old postcards which okay. still have the original shape of the bunkers cool. uh, on them. Okay. Uh, and actually, one of the bunkers was used uh, as a, uh, a burial place after the uh, major accident. Uh, uh, oh, the one in May, the beginning of May. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. So they buried a lot of people in those things, and they were they shut it and sealed it up. And, and it's it's somewhere under there as well. Huh. Uh, yeah. So, and are we going down there or what? Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, we're going down there. All right. Well, lead oh, on. One thing I want to point out is this this uh, thing is uh, added by the French uh, after their recapture. This is uh, not uh, it wasn't present during the the battles for the fort. Okay. Yeah. It's not very fitting with the uh, with the nice stone masonry. What's it for? I uh, think there's two observation. Ah, uh, okay. Things on this side. Here, slit. Oh, I see. Yeah, and obviously right. with the lookout over the 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 frontier over the fog. Yeah. <laughs> so we're following this path. Yeah. Okay. So there would be seven bunkers lined up. Okay. Along the non-existing road. No, the non yeah. <laughs> yeah. So actually, in the game, we have a uh, um, another trench line which yeah. uh, starts right behind that turret over there. Okay. Um, so we have, as you know, we have several lines you need to capture. Yeah. And well, during the attack, the French uh, actually captured uh, uh, the top of the fort yeah. for what it was worth. <laughs> A really great position to get shelled. But the Germans were still in the fort. Uh, they yeah, they took part. the superstructure. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So they were here. So we created another trench line uh, Right over there. Okay. It's like a crow on a, on a stone there. It's like really. Wow. <laughs> it was like that really was very creepy. dramatic. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so the trench wood line would be, would be around here. Okay. Um, yeah, so we have the different lines in, in the game. Um, so people can come up from the two exits of the fort and uh, battle over the, the superstructure. And then the next line would be uh, down in the. Uh, uh, the moat. Of okay. The, fort. the uh, Germans would have come in from this direction um, when attacking the fort. Um, this moat here would have had a very tall inner wall um, designed so that you know if anybody did get in, they had a very sort of high drop to overcome in order to attack the rest of the fort uphill. Um, on the day that the fort fell, or when the Germans finally decided to really get into the grounds of the fort. There were two uh, sort of um, galleries from which you could shoot from. Um, one at that end of the wall, one at that end of the wall, which is a double facing to that end of the left hand wall, um, which that one was manned, these two weren't manned. So the Germans were able to get in more or less unmolested. Okay, now this has been rebuilt some, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, we've been looking when doing research. We're looking at online resources, and some of the fortress experts call this uh, historical vandalism. 
Uh, <laughs> okay, so it's not the way it's supposed to be. No, no, actually, uh, and this is a case where our game is more accurate than reality. Yeah, we are standing right now um, where, um, you know, the, the entrance, and that would be the, the road we described that goes around the fort. Okay. It would come up here and swirl around and would go in, inside the fort and then come out on the other side. Well, why would they do this? Why would they build it like this? Re why would they build it like this? Well, they need to supply their... No, I mean, uh, rebuild it like this. Why oh, rebuild it like that. I, I, I don't Gross know. Gross negligence. Looks cool. <laughs> Gross negligence. Okay. <laughs> See, I'm thoroughly lost, but you know exactly where in the fort we are, right? Yeah. We would be stood more or less on the bend of the road as it curved into the fortress. There'd be a wall um, leading up with railings. Um, these, this area would be en enterable in real life, uh, not enterable in the game. Um, there would be a large similar to the archway that can just be made out behind Yoss, yeah. uh, there would be a large archway to the left of that, which would have been the main entrance. Okay, and they just messed it all up. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Historical vandalism. Historical vandalism. I suppose it's okay. still a fort and it has to be defendable, so I guess that's a tiny doorway with lots of little areas to shoot from. Oh, yeah, okay. It's a little easier to defend yeah, than fact, a large... It actually yeah. is still a fort, right? Yeah. They're Thing is, you know. Yeah, they did. They didn't. They didn't rebuild it. You know, thinking, oh, you know, let's keep it historical. They lost it, and then thought, we don't want to lose it again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Actually, it was used in World War Two. Yeah. There yeah. Was, I don't think there was any fighting, but there was there was soldiers stationed here during World War Two. There was a World War Two. <laughs> Spoiler <laughs> alert! <laughs> the hell! <laughs> you won't believe what happens next. Okay. Oh, clickbait! <laughs> All right, we're putting that in. We're putting that in the comments. Okay, yeah. or in the caption. Shall we head over there? Yeah, of course. Okay, cool. So this is actually really, we were like, oh, we recognize all these parts here. Yeah. Because I think we, in, in the game, we nailed sort of the proportions of it. Uh, especially when walking up from there to here. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, this is the area where the campers would be. Because there's a tunnel <laughs> leading from the main barracks to this part, which okay. is the, the so-called uh, Bourges Casemat. Okay. Uh, which is, uh, in addition to the fort they made later, it's, uh, it would station a 75mm cannon. Oh. The famous French 75s, we've exactly. talked about them a lot, yeah. Yeah, I think there's still one in there, just uh, like a replica, I don't know. <laughs> and, and like with everything external to the fort in terms of like bunkers and machine gun turrets and such, again, that's accessible from inside the fort. Yeah. Yeah, There's, there would be a tunnel leading from near the entranceway up to this uh, bunker which again we've replicated in the game okay that is all for today from fort du almon and these guys are going to leave you with a few words okay we'd like to invite you to join us in the game and fight in the trenches around fort du almon and for the fort itself but until then goodbye see you next time